And welcome back to News On. I'm Miranda Khan with a growing division in our country. Many Americans fear the nation has reached a breaking point. You may be among them and that our differences are simply just we can't reconcile. The state of Texas has historically been very vocal about its quest for independence. But in light of recent events, calls to secede, secede rather easy for me to say, are getting louder and louder, perhaps even more realistic. Joining us live now to weigh in on this is the president of the Texas Nationalist Movement and author of the book, Texit, Why and How Texas Will Lead the Union, Daniel Miller. Good to have you here on News On. Thanks so much for joining us live. Hey, thank you for having me. So, uh, Daniel, what is your reaction to what is happening at this very moment? Because it seems like there we can't come together. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's it's interesting. There there are so many people out there. Uh, unfortunately, people primarily in the mainstream media that seem to think that Texas just sort of popped up overnight. Uh, you know, our organization, the Texas Nationalist Movement, has been pursuing Texas. Uh, since 2005 and ultimately what we believe is that Texas would be better off as an independent nation and and so over the years digits you know fast forward to 2014 for all of our on the ground work and you see that uh, it was a majority of Republicans about a majority of independent voters and even uh, a third of Democrats believe that Texas should leave the Union and so, you know, we have seen this steady growth and, and for the mainstream media, you know, they just they wake up in, in a brand new world every day. Uh, but this is sort of the tail end of the process for us. Uh, we know the support is there for a vote, a Brexit style vote on Texas independence. And we believe, especially in light of recent events where people are just throwing up their hands and realizing that the federal government is unfixable, uh, we believe we'll win it in a landslide. So you mentioned there is a plan in the works. Can you kind of go over that? I mean, you're saying it's getting closer and closer to reality. This isn't just some thought. Uh, so what is the plan? Yeah, yeah. This is not this is not some thought experiment or you know a hobby. Uh, you know, this is a a real live political movement. And and you know, obviously, everything that we have done over the last 15 years has been to build support. But you know, all of that is just sort of academic unless there it's leading somewhere. And uh, where we're headed is exactly what I said, a Brexit-style vote here in Texas. Uh, tomorrow, in the opening day of the legislative session, uh, we're going to see uh, probably a, quite a historic moment as State Representative Kyle Biederman uh, from the Hill Country area in Texas uh, has committed to file legislation that will give Texans a vote on whether or not we should reassert our status as an independent nation. So what do you think, you know, I've got to ask you, what do you think the likelihood of this actually going through is? Like that this will actually happen? I know you said this is the closest that you guys have ever come. Yeah. But if you were to guess. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to look at this um, through a historical lens, right? We're, the, the, a lot of people want to kind of look back to the 19th century, and that's not where we live. We're in the 21st century. Uh, we know that since 1948, uh, independence referenda have been held like this, like we're talking about doing. And out of those, it's about a 90% success rate on the first ballot. And of the remaining, uh, two, uh, two of those actually went back within 10 years and voted to leave. So, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, we're stacked for success. We have uh, the people of Texas on our side. We have history on our side. And frankly, it's sort of a do or die moment for those people that believe in the principles of liberty and individual rights and mm -hmm. self-government and a Republican form of government. This is a do or die moment. Texas can lead by establishing an example of, of what liberty and independence and prosperity look like in the 21st century here in North America. Do you think other states would also join? You know, for, for us, we're not looking at trying to reform a union, right? This is not Confederacy 2.0 or United States federal government version 2.0. Mm -hmm. This is Texas independence. And ultimately, what we encourage everyone to do, uh, regardless of the state that they live in, is to start having this conversation and ask themselves uh, if their interests are served by remaining in the federal system. 
you know, we know that so much of the argumentation that leads to support here in Texas applies to every other state. You know, Texans are sick and tired of living under 180,000 pages of federal laws, rules, and regulations administered by two and a half million unelected bureaucrats. We're sick and tired of overpaying anywhere from 103 to $160 billion a year into the federal system, money that we never see again. Uh, so, you know, there are so many reasons why Texans want Texit, but those reasons can apply almost equally to any other state if they just simply have this conversation. So with this, let me ask you this, because you mentioned Republican. Would this be happening if if it was a different administration that was going to take office? In other yeah, words, you know, if it were a Republican, if this, if President Trump, if he was certified as a winner and he was going to have a second term, do you think you would still be pushing this or are you pushing this because Joe Biden is now the president elect? Well, look, we've been pushing this since 2005. I mean, so do, do the math on all the, the various administrations and what we have seen is support grow. You know, one of the reasons that we grew under the Trump administration was the political establishment, the powers that be in Washington, D.C., uh, and their, you know, propaganda arm in the mainstream media uh, essentially exposed to the world what had remained hidden for the longest time, that there is a political establishment out there that utilizes the power in the federal system to lord over and rule the, the ordinary folks out there, like the folks here in Texas or any other state. So, you know, our support grew during the Trump administration, which I know is probably pretty difficult for a lot of folks to, to understand or come to grips with. But, you know, it, it really, the last four years, proved that the federal system is completely irredeemable. What would you say, and I do want to get to the next topic, but real quickly, what would you say to people that say what you're doing is un-American? Well, I'm, I'm sure Thomas Jefferson would be in strong disagreement with that. Um, you know, I, it was Thomas Jefferson who penned the Declaration of Independence, and he talked about the long train of abuses and usurpations. Well, you know, we can point to a decades-long track record of abuses and usurpations of our fundamental rights, our fundamental liberty, and especially here in Texas, the erosion and eradication right of local self-government. So, you know, would anything people, change your mind? Real quickly, and I, I just want to interrupt because I do want to go to the next topic, would anything change your mind? Well, look, once you come to the realization that Texas would be better off as an independent nation, it's hard to justify that it shouldn't be. You know, we, okay. we flip it around and we say, look, if Texas was an independent, self-governing nation right now and this was a vote to join the union, would we join mm -hmm. the union? And if we wouldn't, then why would we vote to stay? Interesting. Uh, we are running out of time, but real quickly, I just want to lightly touch on this. So former Soviet leader uh, Mikhail Gorbachev claims that he knows who plotted the siege on U.S. on the U.S. Capitol last week. As we mentioned, uh, House Democrats now introducing that article of impeachment, uh, claiming that the president is responsible for inciting that violence. But here is what he said. The storming of the Capitol was clearly designed, he believes, in advance. There's been a lot of rumors out there, and I certainly don't want to further those rumors because we don't know uh, for sure. And we do know that some of those people that were there were, in fact, Trump supporters. So I just want to ask you real quickly, do you think there's any validity when it comes to his claim, yes or no? You know, there's so much misinformation and disinformation flying around. And, you know, it's been amazing to watch the hypocrisy of the left-leaning yeah. media on this particular issue while they applauded cities burning uh, all, all throughout the year of 2020. Uh, this is somehow a bridge too far. In any group of substantial size, you're going to have some outliers. And, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that that same standard that the left wanted us yeah. to judge, the riots... Uh, over the summer, uh, they don't want to apply that standard here, and it just it, it really just highlights the very deep yeah. division that we have in what was formerly the United it States. It does. It does. We are going to have to leave it there. But Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Stick around here on News On. Still to come: winter storm coating southern states with blankets of snow, leaving 150,000 people without power. Is more snow on the way? Find out next.